people who donated to uh, for this book. That has been a great help for me because without your help, I would not have been able to uh, publish this book today. So before I start the presentation, uh, I would like uh, to start actually with two poems. And then I have a friend here that uh, I was telling someone, I probably have the poetic line, but I do not have the poetic voice. That's my problem. <laughs> so, and I was thinking, who do I invite to be here with us? And I thought of Clarence, who uh, we went to school together, and uh, he's a singer and he's very talented. So I would like him to uh, read two poems for us. Thank you, Clarence. A Hidden Treasure. Walking the earth, I climb the mountains, searching in caves and holes in the ground, scanning the waters and the ocean basins, looking for clues that would lead to a treasure, the treasure of the future. As I decide to rest, taking a deep breath, then suddenly remember what Rumi had said. If you want to find the greatest treasure, don't look outside, look inside. Fear of failure. We all fear, sometimes, this Byzantine life that threatens us every day with failure. Therefore, most of us act weak in face of it because the others tell us to. I believe that to be nothing more than a hegemonic myth that can't make me change my course away from the bright future waiting ahead. However, a great teacher said, our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. I'm sure most of you want to know, and I'm sure a lot of you know by uh, Kosovo, the youngest country in the world today. Yes. And, uh, yeah, like you see over there in the map, you, sometimes you just can't even find it because it's so small, the size of Connecticut population 2 million, but we became a country and its birthday is next month. Kosovo's uh, birthday and this is uh, on the top there is um, the new flag of Kosovo. We used to share the flag with Albania, but today we have our own flag and we, are, we have our own institutions and uh, everything. So uh, the history of Kosovo, of course, and that's what led me to write about uh, the first book and the second book, some of the things that were going on, and then things that I went through and things that I wanted to achieve uh, throughout this, uh, this time. Um, right after the death of Tito, I'm sure you've heard of Tito, uh, right after his death, Milosevic became the president of old Yugoslavia, and at that time Yugoslavia also included Kosovo, unfortunately. And uh, for us, for the Albanian people, that was a disaster, because we knew who Milosevic was, and he said, one of the, on his first days, he said, this is my country, Kosovo is my country. And think about it, Kosovo is 90% Albanians, 6% Serbs. He took over and he said, this is my country, and Milosevic was uh, a Serbian uh, dictator. And uh, of course, Albanians were not happy about it, and that's when we start protesting every single day and then blood all over, of course, because it, uh, the more they, they protested the Serbs, the more they would react to, to these kind of things. And, uh, but Albanians were determined, these are the years, the, 19, the 1990s, when Albanians started, we need to do something for, for, our, for our country, because if we just stay quiet, Milosevic is going gonna, is gonna to take over, because he was populating the area with Serbs from Bosnia and Serbia and Montenegro, so that's how uh, he was planning on taking over. One of the first things that affected me also, um, as a student, uh, we lost uh, right after this regime, right when this regime uh, was applied to Kosovo, we couldn't speak our own language. My language is Albanian. We are not allowed to in our own country. You could speak Albanian at home, but not outside because you were Albanian. That's what, you know, you didn't deserve to speak a language. You just stay quiet. That's how we were treated. Jobs. 99% of our people lost their jobs, including my father. He lost his job, and he said, what am I going to do? They thought about moving, but it was difficult to get out. And uh, schools, one of the most important things. 
um, no schools, uh, no future for Kosovo. And that was the goal of this dictator. And then uh, uh, it was, uh, the fir I had finished first grade uh, elementary school, and the second day I go to school with all my friends, all happy and, uh, and waiting for our uh, school to open, and have our teachers uh, welcome us, that's what we usually do. But that day, it was September 1992, when uh, out of the school came serving uh, uh, soldiers with their guns and saying to them, scaring the kids and saying, you all go home, this school is not for you, you're all beings. You do not deserve education. And I was one of them that day. And uh, so that's when we started, you know, as, as children, of course, going, going home and crying. And, uh, but there was no solution. There were no answers to our questions why that was happening. So uh, even that was happening. We went to school without a school there, uh, on quotation marks, uh, for eight years. We got an education secretly trying to uh, find a safe place that serves would not find out that we were getting an education because as an Albanian, like I said, I was not, not allowed to get an education and that was happening throughout uh, the country. Excuse me. And the picture is taken somewhere else, but that's what we did also if the place was safe. So like all those things were going on, Albanians protesting, Milosevic said, okay, that's it. We're going to deal uh, with this problem in a different way, ethnic cleansing, to get rid of all the Albanian people from their lands. And they started doing that. Uh, by 1999, um, more than a million Albanians left were forced to leave. And this is how it happened. Brought to my mind some old memories mixed with tears, some memories mi mingled with fears. The mind itself recalls the wailing history written, written on muddy lanes by refugees' tracks, escaping their homes, groggy and barefoot, crying and glancing back from time to time, making sure that death is still a few feet away. Oh, monstrous days, please make nobody go through this misery and agony again, never again. She would have done this for ten days more. The Sharan Yetan for Tash Padua. She would have done for Tarritor, since there is the Koe Kate of Aprito. I'm very happy that I can read Albanian actually because that's been three and a half years, no Albanians here whatsoever, so in Oregon. So uh, I'm losing my own language, but I have English. So. <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again.